I'm telling the story is I was trying to draw the connections between the life cycle of the bird and what the platforms were doing for them and the reactions of people watching them how that was maybe interact influencing the organize you know the, the public support for these organizations the funding they're dependent on funding from the public so whether these webcams were a positive or not and whether they were actually unintended consequences because anything in nature things are going to go wrong the young will die they'll be predated by other things and of course if somebody sees that happening on a webcam they get all upset why aren't you intervening why aren't you doing something about this and I said well we can't We've, you know these are we can't interfere it's a wild bird we can't interfere with them uh, so it'll be all sorts and uh, but, but the process of doing that I found fascinating because I kept I draw a line but you know um, a connection between one factor and another and then I say why did I draw that line there I don't see an actually that doesn't and then I realized there was a whole lot of like things, persecution and people who, um, gamekeepers, they were nowhere in these loops. I said, oh, I haven't even worked out for how they connect into the system. They're there somewhere, but my connections. So what fascinated me was about that. I went through an incredible, and I, this is only I just started this, just to create these diagrams. I use Kumu, by the way, it's really useful for doing this. but. Um, it just took me through a real journey of thinking and questioning and examining what way were the assumptions I was making about what was going on. And all I, I just would love to do is get a group of ornithologists in the room and biologists and a group of webcam watchers and, a, you know, that, that you just have the most wonderful conversations. They'd probably kill each other, but it would be wonderful. <laughs> you know, they would argue over what should go in the diagram, what should not be there. And it's all, you know, because if you are somebody who knows a great deal about a system, they feel everything should be in there. And trying to get them to recognize, well, what are the essential components we need at this moment in time to discuss this topic? So there'll be a lot of questioning around the boundaries you're putting on that system. <coughs> and that's where I said that through the simple process of doing a diagram, I felt you could bring a lot of that out in a very... Um, I often find if you get people sitting down discussing things, they're much more likely to get into conflict than if you were to get them working on something like a diagram, a model. You know, it takes the tension away from personalities onto the object, the problem, whatever. Um, so th that was just another example of a diagram. And these, these are cognitive maps, which I, I was doing. I had did some questionnaire analysis using cognitive maps. Now, again, I'm, I'm not going to try and explain this to you, but it's, it, again, it's a way of constructing the feedback from people in a certain particular way. And again, it pushes you to think, why am I putting that there? Why am I grouping and that in that way? And you have certain conventions to follow in doing a cognitive map, which then forces you to think a bit differently. Um, so there are some of the examples. So these are some of the observations I then made on the use of diagrams. Or, or actually, they're not all my observations. They came from other people as well. That they're, 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 somebody said to me they're useful in tracking thought processes. In other words, keeping track of how I'm thinking and why I'm thinking that way and helping me to get insights into my way of thinking. Um, they also give a visual picture of something and tell a story. Uh, and again, it may be a, at an individual level, but also if you start doing that collaboratively, creating a diagram, a map, to anybody else it might make no sense, the diagram, but to those people who have created that diagram, it does. Uh, and I think that's the thing to remember. Diagrams often, they, you know, you, I mean, I have the unfortunate job sometimes of assessing the diagrams of students, and they don't often make a lot of sense to me, but I'm sure they do to the student, and I'm trying to get them try and make, it has to be a communication tool, I tell them. But usually diagrams don't need to be a communication tool. Uh, systems diagrams, they can often be for the group of people that are working on them. And they make a lot of sense to those people. Um, they can draw attention to things that, you know, again, just doing something like a rich picture. Somebody can put down an image of something. I said, why have you put that person there? Why have you put those two people together? Why have you why have you done that? You know, and it'll raise questions and issues about why people are seeing things in particular ways. Helps the structure develop thinking. Again, it depends. I mean, I, I'm talking about diagrams in general here. Different techniques use different diagramming techniques. Um, and it can create link and link narratives. 
I maintain that it makes it very difficult to avoid being critically reflective. In other words, keep thinking about why I'm doing things this way, where am I, why am I assuming this, why am I putting that person in the picture and that person out of it. Um, because I'm having to make selection. I can't draw everything, I can't put everything in the diagram. I've got to leave some things out and I'm very conscious of doing that. May I disagree with you? You can, of course. You can do. <laughs> interested in your comment that diagrams don't need to be uh, transmissible, if you like. I mean, in terms of influencing the wider system to do something, yeah. they do need to be understood. And maybe their larger purpose, like language, is to be a language for doing that. So I it's part of the process yeah. is helping people to understand the diagram or method just enough to understand what the result is. I suppose to me, I would answer that by saying it depends on the purpose you're diagramming. If you're doing it as a communication tool to share with others, yes, absolutely. But if you are, it, sometimes it's just the process of doing the diagram can be. Yes. Yeah, so, so yeah, it depends on its purpose. Again, you come back to purpose, knowing what your purpose is. Um, but yeah, yeah, some of the diagrams I do, would, you know, wouldn't be good as a communication tool. But right, what are we on time? Ah, we just about enough time to do this. Right. This is your next question. Diagram is an essential aspect. It's essential, I'm saying. You might totally and utterly disagree with this. The diagram is essential to applying systems thinking approaches. But discuss. This is, this is my statement to you. So I'm giving you 10 minutes now again to discuss. <coughs> and when we finish this, I will have about, yeah, a few, five minutes for wrap up. So okay, you've got another 10 minutes. If you want to change around, please do, if you want to stick with your original. <laughs> Thank you. 
looks good. It's only the yes, green light is good. That's That's right. Right. Yeah, no, actually, it's working quite good. Is it? Yeah. Okay, good, good, good. Just keep it pointing. <laughs> no, I did because I've taken it on and off. All <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, how to Okay, five minutes. Right, great. Um, can I can I ask you all to stop talking now? Um, <laughs> <laughs> As per last time, a any any anybody want to share anything? Anything you'd like comment you'd like to make? Anybody uh, want to? Go for it. I'll, I'll think we were, yeah. Go. Okay. We were discussing. I think the last point you made around if the diagram itself becomes complex, mm. and we kind of stopped at that because you interrupted. Us. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Would you, do you want to continue and say no, what you're no, no, no. no. <laughs> the idea, I suppose, that there must be a sort of optimum level of yeah. um, complexity. Yeah. It probably depends on the group, if they understand what they're doing with the diagram. Yeah, we, had to, we were talking about 3D representation being like a ever enlarging yeah. um, plate of spaghetti. Yeah. Well, things are all connected up. You Your understanding goes down again. We don't hear very well. Okay, so they're just saying that if the diagram becomes too complex, yeah. you know, then there, there must be a kind of upper limit to the level of complexity of the diagram, <laughs> and that, you know, that it becomes less useful. And for some greater than others. Yeah. So we talked about disassociation and association. So how well do you associate with the representation of yourself? as part of a system, um, but also the fact that it allows you to disassociate and talk about yourself in the third person if you like. So yeah. if you've got a systems diagram and you start putting uh, subjects that might be taboo to normally talk about into a rich picture, say, suddenly everybody starts talking about that thing from a disassociated perspective because yeah. it becomes okay to talk about it because we're just talking about this picture now. Yeah. But then we start saying, can you do the same thing in reverse where you start associating with elements of the picture that you didn't notice before? Um, I was just about to give, as, a, as an example, um, I like drawing a picture of, of how road traffic flows and, and uh, my favorite example is when you get two lanes merging into one on a dual carriageway and everyone gets very annoyed because there's complete, you get one lane's completely empty and then you get BMW tears down and tries to push you through. <laughs> and there's nothing we can do. <laughs> what was it BM? Yeah, they're switching around. <laughs> That, that there's nothing you can do until you get to the very last minute and then you, everyone goes bumper to bumper to make sure that they can't squeeze in. <laughs> uh, when you draw a picture of what's happening from a helicopter perspective, it becomes really obvious that that's the behaviour that's causing the problem because yeah. if everyone just spent that whole 400 yards of warning lining up, you know, gap car, gap car, we'd all 
merge and turn, as the sign usually tells us to do, and it would all work fine. But once you see it from there, you realize that that's what you should do, yeah. then you reassociate once you have that experience. Oh, that's what's happening. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. See it in a different way. Yeah. Well, it was a bit like this yeah. thing Russell was saying to. Thing yeah. He explained that, and we all agreed, without a diagram. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, yes, I mean, yes, but that's. <laughs> if I had a piece of paper, I could have done that much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you so had a picture in your mind, didn't yeah. you? Yeah, yeah. He, <laughs> but he, he was able to use a good story, you see. I mean, if you can use a good story, he did, he did use a lot of hands that was diagramming the end. Uh -huh. so, <laughs> <laughs> it was still a diagram, and he is a professional diagrammer. Uh -huh. I think it's not necessarily it has to be a diagram, but a model of something. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I said a mathematical formula can also, uh, if taking that question literally, what is essential? Yeah. And I think mm -hmm. abstract thinking, abstract models that you use to interrogate something that you can't really hold in your head. So a mathematical formula might work. What you've just described, I've seen a documentary about that using mathematical modeling. And uh, I, I think that's more the idea of it has to be a symbolic model yeah. to interrogate the system, not just a dialogue. I suppose the other question I have around that is, is, is the that you have to actually follow a particular process in doing particular diagrams because diagrams have okay to do uh, you know a causal loop has this convention uh, influence diagram has another convention um, so I, I just wonder does that process actually in some way help this uh, you know, because if, as I said, I do get students who draw a diagram any old way and tell me it's a spray diagram or it's a mind map or it's a something and I'm there thinking, come on. Because underlying all these diagrams has usually been a process of development and evolution and whoever developed them probably thought very deeply about what they were doing and why they've been asking you to draw them in particular ways. I don't know, this is a question I'm, I'm asking at the moment. Yeah? Is it, is it not a... Uh Diagram, a diagramming language is an essential aspect. Possibly, yeah, 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 possibly. No, because it, I said what I'm interested in thing is what will help people to become more critically reflective and what kind of processes can you engage people on besides trying to teach them to be critically reflective when you don't quite even know what that is, um, how to do it. But yeah. Ra yeah, could do that. Yeah. Sometimes that's a negative. Yeah. Could be either. Myself. Yeah. It depends on whether you know. You you might think it's a negative, but somebody else will say, "Well, actually, it's a good thing." It stopped you. <laughs> yeah. The connection of these other sort of types of entities that are involved, you pretend you can't see one of those in front of you, and you start to question, "Well, where is that thing? Why is it missing?" Yeah. And so the fact that you've got this formal sort of set of constructs there does provide a sort of window through which yeah. you can look at the world and sort of start the bits yeah. yeah, I mean I had that problem with a student of mine who said, I can't remember what diagram they had to draw, but he said, oh I know already in my head what I want to put into it. And I said, that's not the idea of doing the diagram. <laughs> 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 Hopefully you'll begin to see things a little bit differently. <laughs> oh yeah, okay, sorry. Uh, right, would, is that cut off? Yes. Okay, uh, we'll stop oh, there. Quick. One quick one. Okay, okay. Should we go home? Sorry, I'm, I'm going to kill it all. Yeah, okay. <laughs> do, do, do. Reflection is a metaphor. Yeah. We describe the window. Okay. We don't need a diagram. Yeah, okay. The metaphors are a, yeah. a good substitute. Mm -hmm. All the only challenge I put you is that metaphors rely on language. And language can be constraining sometimes, to my mind. Oh, metaphors, yeah, what's diagrams are constrained. Yeah, exactly, they can be, yeah. But they're just another form, they're a different form of, yeah. You can use them both. You can use them both, yeah. Probably should, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we could obviously get into lots of uh, argument around this. Um, sorry, I have no time now for questions. <laughs> you could ask me questions later. What are we doing now? Are we... Coffee, break, coffee. coffee break, right, okay. <laughs> right, I, I, yeah, okay, thank you very much. Can we do 15 minutes?